Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We're going to continue from where we stopped last time, okay? So previously, we talked about the classification of living things. If you look at the world around you, there are all kinds of living creatures. How do you even go about classifying them? In living things, are, we classify them according to their characteristics. And we look at various different things. Last time, some of the various different things that we look at are external features, the external appearance of a living thing. And their internal features to determine whether or not they are related species. And speaking of species, the word species has a very specific definition in biology. And that is a species are two entities, two entities that are able to interbreed and they have to have offspring that are viable, that are fertile. Do you understand? If a species has offspring that are infertile, that is not able to reproduce, that's the end of the species, right? Two living things are considered the same species if they're able to interbreed and have viable offsprings. And then we said uh, the following is the classification that is used uh, by biologists. So living things are categorized according to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, because we all know king plays chess on Fridays, generally speaking. This you have to know. Kingdom, phylum. And animal kingdom has all animals. Animal kingdom does not have plants, so there's, right? So animal kingdom has all animals. So this category does not have plants, right? So if you say, okay, we're talking about this, this wolf over here, right? The lone wolf. So how do we classify the lone wolf? Clearly it's not a plant, right? So it's in the animal kingdom. So all the animals are there. But among the animals, if you, ex if you look at only the chordates, that's, that's a subphylum. So every kingdom have a bunch of phylums. And this wolf belongs to the phylum chordate, chordata. Those, these are living things that have backbones. No, note. So it belongs to this phylum chordata, meaning it belongs to the phylum of living things that have backbones. Everything over here that you see has backbones. Jellyfish is excluded because who's ever seen a jellyfish with a backbone? Yes? Okay. And then among the chordates, there are a bunch of classes. There are a bunch of classes. And this species belongs to the class mammalia or mammals. Mammals are living things that have hair and their, their females produce milk and things like that. We're mammals, right? And alligator, for example, is excluded because nobody ever seen an alligator with hair and producing milk. Or, yeah, <laughs> that's a strange looking alligator, <laughs> right? Whoa. So those are mammals. And among mammals, it's a carnivore, carnivora, car the carnivore. So, you know, you never seen, you know, so look, look at the living, like dolphin. Dolphin is not a, a carnivore. It's a mammal, right? Dolphin is a mammal, but it's not a carnivore. It's excluded. Among, uh, the carnivore is the canidae. I don't know what that exactly means. It's a canine, all right? And among them are the canines, and among them is the one particular species. So this is how you classify living things. From going from kingdom to species, get more and more and more and more specific categories. Does that make sense? Every living species has a name. Every living species has a unique name. So we talked about Homo sapiens last time and this is the classification of Homo sapiens. Today we shall introduce ourselves a little bit more to the six kingdoms. So all living things are divided into six different kingdoms. In other words, if you find a living thing, it's going to belong to one of these six different categories, kingdoms. Yes? First, there are two kingdoms that belong to bacteria. Bacteria. Bacteria are pretty special. Two kingdoms. Like, surprisingly, they didn't take over the world. They kind of do because of the of bacteria inside of you, you know what I'm saying? 
Nevertheless, so there are two kingdoms that belong to bacteria. Kingdom Archibacteria, the word Archi meaning old, old bacteria, and there's Kingdom Eubacteria, the two bacteria. And then there's this category, Protista or Protist. This is a cool category. Protists are like not bacteria, but they're not quite anybody else. Okay? And then there are the three categories that are, you probably recognize the, the fungi, the plant, and animal. The kingdom fungi or fungi, kingdom animalia, kingdom plantae, right? So now this you have to know. This picture that you see before you, you kind of have to know like, it's like basics. Kingdom Archibacteria, Eubacteria. And the way that you see them before you is the way it, scientists believe they evolved. In other words, plants evolved from protists. Animals evolved from protists. Fungi evolved from protists. Protists didn't evolve from fungi. Fungi didn't evolve from plants. And protists are thought to have evolved from bacteria. Does that make sense? So these are the six kingdoms. The first two kingdoms are the only prokaryotes. You know, remember the prokaryotes versus eukaryotes? Prokaryotes, which are simpler cells. Very good, prokaryotes, right? How is a bacteria going to be more complicated than a protist or a fungi? I can't, I'm just like, ah, oh, we're going to evolve into something simpler. This is getting too hard. <laughs> no! Bacteria. Give me example of a protist. Strep throat. Bacteria. Meningitis bacteria. Protist. You get a boil. Bacteria. Protist. Right? You have a fungus in your yard. Eukaryote. Plants. Eukaryote. Some students. <laughs> no. Animals. Eukaryotes. Do you understand? So, if you want to find an example of a prokaryote, piece of cake, bacteria. Everybody else is eukaryotes. But prokaryotes are simple cells. Simple cells. Okay, okay, my friends, look. Look, 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 look. There are people who go to school to graduate school. There are people who go to school to mature in life, to love life, to experience life, to understand life. To see the world in a different way, to appreciate the beauty of a less creation. I encourage you to try to be in the second category. Because why would you want to live in a dull world where you can live in a beautiful world? Do you understand? It is your choice. So, so, look, the second category of students would be able to articulate the difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. The cardinal feature, the most important feature of what it means to be a eukaryote. You are a eukaryote, yes or no? Yes or no? Doubts? <laughs> yes or no, you are a eukaryote. You, shouldn't you know what that means? Really? What's the difference between you and a bacteria? I don't know. I think they're small. But no. So you have to know the single most important distinguishing feature between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. You have to know the single most important distinguishing feature between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. Wouldn't you want to know? Tune in for next time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what is it? Anybody know? Eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. In other words, in other words, Inside the cell, there are tiny organelles that have membranes around them. Do you understand? Like the nucleus and the plasmic reticulum, like chloroplasts, like mitochondria, like lysosomes. Do you understand? These are membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotes have that. Prokaryotes? Don't think so. Ever seen one? No. If you ever seen a bacteria with the chloroplast is a strange looking bacteria. It ain't no bacteria. Do you understand that? So, what's the single defining cardinal feature 
between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. Eukaryotes have membrane bond organelles. It's like eukaryotes have membrane bond organelles. Okay, scan, beam, not, not eukaryote. I'm sorry, permission has been denied. And you, you have to know. I mean, it's the simplest thing. They have stuff like mitochondrial chloroplast nucleus. Nucleus! Hmm, cell with a nucleus, cell without a nucleus. I think I will take a cell with a nucleus. Simple as that. Now, and then you gotta know bacteria, prokaryotes, everybody else, is it? Eukaryote. Simply, isn't that easy? Okay, now look. I told you. I told you all. Now listen, I told you. The prokaryotes are the funky group. The protista, I mean. The protists are a funky group. I mean, they're kind of strange creatures. Uh, you'll see what I mean. They do some weird stuff. So, true or false? All prokaryotes are unicellular. True or false? True. It's just right there. All prokaryotes are unicellular. They don't want to sell. There's no, like, a giant bacteria walking on the street. It's, <laughs> it's one cell. They're all one cell. Do you understand? Protist. Oh. They can be unicellular or multicellular, but they're eukaryotes. Do you understand that? So one very weird thing about protists you realize immediately is that, hey, wait a minute. So all fungi are multicellular, right? Plants multicellular, animals multicellular, protists, they can be unicellular or multicellular. I bet you, you've seen multicellular protists. Mm -hmm. You just didn't recognize them. You saw it. Okay, now we're going to survey each of these kingdoms, meaning we're going to give a cursory review of each of these kingdoms. As we said, there are three prokaryotic kingdoms, yes or no? No, there's only two prokaryotic kingdoms, two bacteria. Okay, you gotta be try to keep you awake. You know? Two prokaryotic kingdoms Archaebacteria, eubacteria. Look at this the oldest prokaryotic fossil known. 3.4 million years! No, 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 no. 3.4 billion years ago. That's BYA, short for billion years. Earth is what? 4.5? 4, 4. 5 billion years old? I mean, these, these critters, bacteria, have been around since like, whoa! Very long time! Very long time. Do you understand? Four, uh, 3.4 billion. That's the oldest known prokaryote fossil. Maybe they were around longer. They didn't stand. Now, this is very interesting. There can be heterotrophs or they can be autotrophs. Heterotrophs means they depend on others for their food. Autotrophs, they make their own food. They, are pho they can be photosynthetic. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought only plants did photosynthesis. Rude. Look at this. You thought only plants did photosynthesis, but bacteria has been around 3.4 billion years. Don't you think they figured it out by now how to do it? Of course they did. How do you think plants know? Yes? What's the organelle in plants, eukaryotic cell, that does photosynthesis? What's the green organelle that does photosynthesis? <coughs> Very good, is it? Chloroplast. Chloroplast is an organ that is photosynthesis, right? Don't worry, you learn all about it. Yes? So some theorize that chloroplasts are primitive bacteria. Bacteria that the eukaryotic cell engulfed. So who really does? If if the chloroplast was a primitive bacteria, who really does the chloro uh, who really does the photosynthesis in plants? Bacteria! So do bacteria do photosynthesis? Yes or no? So yeah, some do. Some do. They're photosynthetic bacteria. I mean, what did I just say? I said there's some students who want to take a class because they want to get, get a diploma. And then I said there's some students who take a class because they want to love life. Okay? Now look. The students who want to love life do the following. What is the purpose of photosynthesis? They would know. What's the purpose of photosynthesis? A purpose of photosynthesis is to capture the energy from sunlight to produce 
energy rich compounds do you understand to capture energy is it the only way to produce energy no there are other ways so there's another process called chemosynthesis it is kind of like photosynthesis but without the green light so to speak so there's other ways of capturing energy other than photosynthesis the other way is chemo Synthesis. So chemosynthesis and photosynthesis. So those are the two ways that bacteria can be autotrophs. So what's the difference between kingdom Archibacteria and kingdom Eubacteria? Now, this bacteria that you see was Streptococcus piece. I'm sure most of you are intimately familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Strep throat. That's the one. You go to the doctor, they swap the back. Oh, you got strep throat. It came back part. Yes, that's this bacteria. So, what's the difference between these two kingdoms? Several hundred species. Most live in extreme oxygen free environments. This is very strange. They live in extreme environments, like like volcanic soil or something like that. It's like they want to play with danger. Yes? <coughs> Why? Why do you think that's the case? Why do they live in extreme environments? Any guesses? Oh, they're tough dudes. Good try. Good try. I'll give you a thousand points for trying. Yes? Because they evolved in extreme environments. Because the Earth 3.5 billion years ago is not the same Earth now. They were not even in any plants, for God's sake. You know what I mean? If you, learn, if you came on Earth 3.5 billion years ago, it would be a volcanic rock. Do you understand? Of course they live, they, they live in an extreme environment because that's where they're, it's like home for them. <gasps> Finally, no trees. You know, it's like at home. My great 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 grandfather used to say. They lived in extreme environments. Do you understand? So archibacteria. Sites and they don't like oxygen because there was no oxygen on Earth. They made the oxygen on Earth because they were photosynthetic. They were the first photosynthetic living things. So there was no oxygen. If you were to go to Earth 3.5 billion years, 4 billion years ago, you better have some oxygen with you. It would be a short trip otherwise. So they live in extreme oxygen-free environments like swamps, deep ocean, hydrothermal vents. In deep ocean hydro it's like volcanic vents see you understand there could be volcanoes underwater it's not like you have to be on land to have volcanoes right it's just less cause it's like lava coming from the earth's center right so to speak. so there's volcanoes under under the ocean most of the earth is under the ocean there's gonna be volcanoes under the ocean those are the deep ocean hydrothermal vents that's where you find them they have a cell wall you can't be a, s a bacteria cell without a cell wall. Because how now? How are you going to survive in a deep underwater hydrothermal vents if you don't have a cell wall? You're going to be toast before you can say to toast. You understand? You have to have a cell wall. Ah, uh, they have DNA and RNA, and they're very different from other prokaryotes. So, it's very easy to understand their particular peculiar features. So there are several hundred species of Archaebacteria. It should not be surprising to you that there are some 5,000 known species of Eubacteria. Right? Because they evolved! They have a bad reputation, but most of them are harmless and some of them are essential for us. We have lots of bacteria that we have a symbiotic relationship with them. They live in our colon and yeah, they help us. So, there are a lot many of more of you bacteria. They have a strong cell wall. They have a less complex genetic makeup because they're more specialized and they're found everywhere. Anywhere you go, you can be pretty sure you can find a bacteria. Mm hmm. Anywhere you go. Even like the Arctic, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because they're polar bears. Polar bears have bacteria in their intestines. Examples, strep throat, pneumonia, bacteria, meningitis, bacteria, etc., etc. So most of these, however, are harmless. I hope, I hope you understand 
some appre better appreciation of the kingdom of Archibacteria, kingdom of real bacteria, right? So if you know what a bacteria, a bacteria, you should have some understanding. Don't mess with them. They've been around for a while. There are two types. One of them are Archibacteria. They live in weird and extreme environments, and then there's the Eubacteria, the more common ones, right? Then they're the protists. They're the funky group. They're like the funky group. Example of protist includes the slime mold, the amoeba, euglena, dinoflagellates, the paramecium, the diatoms. These are actually very important. And the macroagula. Macro okay, these are examples of protists. We're going to actually study them. So by the time we're done, you should be familiar with these, okay? Now, if you do this course and you, and you say, if you ever say a paramecium is a bacteria, Prokaryote? You understand? These are all eukaryotes. They are eukaryotes. Unicellular or multicellular. But they don't have complex organ systems. They don't have a brain, for example. Right? They don't have complex organs. They live in moist environments. Their fossils are about 2 billion years old reasonably reputable but not like 3.4 billion year old bacteria right so they can so think about it for a second about 1.4 billion years later long time they're classified so now look at this protist so there are three types of protist okay and very intuitive you don't have to like, like go crazy memorizing this okay there are three types of protist okay I'll tell you the protist that are like fungi. They're called fungi like protists. And they're protists that are like plants. They're called plant like protists. And they're protists that are animals, animal like protists. So they're called animal like protists. But they don't have all the features of fungi. So they're not called fungi. They don't have all the features of plants, so they're not called plants. They're not, they don't have all the features of animals, so they're not called animals. Yes? So they're kind of in between, right? No wonder they're in between, between the bacteria and the rest of the kingdoms. Does that make sense? So there are fungi-like protists, there are plant-like protists, and there are animal-like protists. Okay. What does anyone mean, right? To be like fungus, right? You see, if I want to be fungus-like, what would I have to do? I would have to be able to decompose. <gasps> Not going there. Thank you. I'm fine where I am. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you have to know the cardinal features of what it means to be a fungus, what it means to be a plant, what it means to be an animal. Do you understand? We'll talk about it. So when I say there are fungus-like protists, you should know what that means, right? But for now, <coughs> we're going to go progressive logical reasoning. So they, they are eukaryotes, yes or no? Yes. They can be uni or multicellular, live in moist environments. And there are three types, as I Here's a paramecium. Look at this. What do you see inside those things? What are those round things inside of it? Those are membrane bound organelles. You cannot confuse this. It ain't no prokaryote. Now, this is pretty, very, pretty interesting. Look at this. Right? Look at that. There's stuff going on in there. But look at this. Right? You don't get a good look. Right? Look at this. This one. Okay. You know what it's doing? You know what that is? They don't have cell wall. They don't have cell wall. That's why this guy's able to move and be flexible like that. They don't have cell wall. Cell wall is very helpful. But it has its limitations, okay? Very helpful. We just said one very big advantage of cell wall. What did we say? What does cell wall do for you? Not for you because you don't have cell wall. Yes, sir. It protects. It protects the living thing. Very good. It protects it, right? So, therefore, you ain't going to find paramecium, you know, by a volcano. You don't want to understand. Niche, its its habitat is going to be limited. Its habitat, do you understand? One very important way a cell wall protects itself, a living thing, is the following. All right, I take a paramecium. You know where you find paramecium? 
right here outside. You find a puddle, right here puddle. Take a drop of it and put it in here. You see, you see these guys. Probably you see a lot of people all over the place. But if you take a paramecium and you put it in a pure water, you know what's going to happen to it? What's going to happen? You put a paramecium in pure water. Is it heaven? No, it's going to die. Because all the water is going to rush inside. Because of diffusion. Diffuse inside. Do you understand? Because all the electrolytes is going to suck the water in. You follow? So, they have to constantly take the water out, dump the water out. In other words, aka, they have to have a sump pump. Oh. They have a sump pump. Look at this. How is that sump pump? Pretty, pretty, pretty interesting adaptation though, right? So they have to constantly dump the water out. Okay? So this is a paramecium. Now, dog vomit. You've seen this dog, dog vomit. I told you, you've seen photos. Dog vomit. Now this, you know what this is? You know what this is? If you ever see dog vomit, and come back like a couple hours later, it won't be at the same place. Because why? It moves. Oh, yeah. It's moving. Because it's living in things. In fact, with this dog woman, you can see it's trail. It was here. And it moved over here. This is like millions of protists. One, they come together in a colony. It's a protist party. Do you understand? It's very, it's, if you ever see this dog woman, it's... It's not obviously not dog vomit, right? It's a, you understand? It's actually a living thing. If you take a picture of it, you come back later, it might not be there. Curiously, do it. When you see this, take a picture of it. Come back later, see what happens. It won't it move, it won't be there. It's amazing. Yeah? Like this. Because, now, look at this. At some point in this life, okay, this is what it is. It's an, it's an ame amoeba. It's an, you know an amoeba? This is like thousands of amoebas together. Big amoeba party. And what's an amoeba you say? Well amoeba is a protist. Here's an amoeba on the right side trying to eat a what? A paramecium. Right? So amoebas are very peculiar things. They're like blobs. They now, you might think that amoeba looks shapeless, right? Kind of like, like that, going everywhere. It's actually not shapeless. It has a front end, it has a back end, right? So this is like the front end, it has a back end. It kind of looks like that, but it actually is not shapeless. It's kind of semi-shapeless. But it sends, the way it moves, you know, what was that little uh, hamsters? You put a hamster in a ball, and hamster goes like this, right? So that's what it does. It has, you know, it has pushes things forward, and that's how it moves. So it puts out these feet. They're not really feet, so they're called pseudo feet. They're called pseudopods. Pseudo feet. Pseudo means fake, false. Pseudopods are f pods are feet, as in podiatrists, podiatrists, foot doctors, right? Right. So they, it sends out the pseudopods, and that's how it moves. And it can eat other things. Okay. Now eating other things eating other things is one defining feature of animals so amoeba is a animal like protist here you see it eating a paramecium but what kind of animal is like one cell animals it's like it's like shameful you understand to be an animal you have to be by definition multicellular so it's like animal but it's not like animal do you understand that's what it means all right. Now, in front of you, you might you, this is what you've seen. If you've been to an aquarium, if you've been to an aquarium, you've seen this more than once. That's not a plant, you know. That's a protist. That's a multicellular protist. They're called kelps. Okay, they're plant-like protists. You thought they were plants when you saw them, right? But they don't have the structure of plants. Plants are exceptionally structured. You'll see. They're nothing like plants. They don't look not inside from the inside. They don't look nothing like plants. They're multicellular, but without the organs or organ systems of plants, like 
yeah, no flowers, right? They don't have the vascular system of plants, things like that. They look nothing like it. But easy to confuse. That's a kill. So we talked about archaebacteria, eubacteria, two cubes below the bacteria, right? Then we talked about protist. Paramecium, photosynthetic, by the way. They have, they make photosynthesis. So we talked about photosynthetic protists. We talked about animal-like protists, amoeba. We talked about plant-like protists, the kelps. We talk more about this. This is just an introduction, you know. This is, of course, the biology. I mean, it's Kingdom fungi! The defining feature of a fungus is what? They decompose. Decompose means what? They eat what? They eat dead stuff. Very important. If the dinosaurs weren't decomposed, you'd be like scared to get out. Mommy, the monster outside. No, don't worry. You died a long time ago. You decomposition. It's very serious, actually. If there was, if it weren't for the decomposing bacteria and fungi, I'm not kidding you. There'd be dead animals everywhere. It's one of the greatest blessings of Allah. Decomposers. You follow? So fungi are the, one of the most decomposable, but then that's their job qualification. You understand? Now these morals over here, they're pretty uh, expensive. These are so some many fungi, as you know, are edible. You can eat them. Okay. Like this more very very fancy, expensive because they only grow for a few days in a very few places, like over here. They're a delicacy. Some fungi are poisonous. They are stationary heterotrophs. Stationary. They don't move. Ever seen a fungi move? Uh uh. They're unicellular or multicellular eukaryotes. There are more than 50,000 known species. There are lots of them. I mean, first of all, I studied bio, I don't know about you, but I didn't think fungi deserved their own kingdom. You know, it's so much for God's sake, you know? But no, they're very complex and they're very important. There are 50,000 species of fungi. You just don't see them. Yeah, they're humble. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you understand? Look, when you cut a tree, you know, you want to find a fungi, you know there's something you cut a tree. Okay, have, watch this, okay? If, if, if somebody, they're building something over here, and they cut down a tree, you go there like a week, two later, you'll see fungi growing over it, because that tree's dead! Right? You cut down a tree, you see a tree stump, you go over there, you see this, fungi! What are they doing? Their job! Do you understand? So, fungi decomposing. Not all fungi look like fungi. Not all fungi look like fungus. Some of them, like over here, this kingdom plantae. Plants. Plant, plant, plants. Like to see before you. By definition, all are multicellular and photosynthetic eukaryotes. So, hmm, what is one defining feature of plants? Hmm, photosynthesis, right? Easy peasy, all multicellular. Are plants the only, only ones that do photosynthesis? No. Who else does photosynthesis? Who does it? Some bacteria, yes, very good. Who does, who else does it? Uh, let me repeat the question, in case you're daydreaming for it. Some bacteria, we already said that. And? Plants, they have, you ever seen a plant, if you ever seen a plant that doesn't do photosynthesis, it's dead. <laughs> all right. No. The, by definition, they do, all right? But who? Who else does it? Who does, who else does photosynthesis? Huh? Plant-like protist. Very good. Plant-like protist. There are protists that are plant-like. What does that mean? They do photosynthesis. There are protists that are Animal-like. What does that mean? They eat other things, like amoeba. Just, you just saw the poor guy eat the paramecium. Yes? And there are protists that are fungus-like. I mean, they're decomposers. Right? You follow. But not all protists do photosynthesis, but all plants do photosynthesis. Plants, stationary, usually have chloroplast. And cell walls make up made of, uh, of cellulose. <gasps> cellulose! They have cell walls. They have cell walls. Over 250 different thousand species of plants. Okay, 
evolution they've mastered it so what's special about plants I'm going to tell you something about plants don't underestimate the power of plants they're very special plants are they're so complex when you study them say oh my god I didn't know that they were so complex right so they have organs they have organs see a leaf is an organ like heart is an organ liver is an organ right kidney is an organ leaf is an organ like that okay plants have organs stems are organs plants have like reproductive parts like flowers is a plant reproductive structure it makes the next generation of plants the seeds that's what that's the function of reproductive structures right to produce the next generation so flowers their job is what to make seeds the reproductive structures of plants last kingdom of kingdom animalia they're multicellular heterotrophs they're heterotrophs in other words animals don't do photosynthesis you, you do photosynthesis no you be green yeah <laughs> no let me ask you something is photosynthesis is, is that what makes plants green yes Yes. Photosynthesis captures light, right? Right? Look, I want you, when you go out there next, you pick a leaf from a leaf and you look at a leaf, right? And you turn it around. You'll notice the underside leaf will be lighter than the top side because there are more photosynthetic cells on the top side than there are on the side. There are more chloroplasts in the top. Do you notice that ever? The top side of the leaf is darker because it has more chloroplasts. Simple as that. You didn't know that, did you? But that's cool. That's the beauty of science. Very good question. Um, very good question. Uh, th yes, they can be. The, the, the color of a thing, okay, is what it is because of the light that it absorbs, right? Plants are green because they absorb blue and red light better than green, and they reflect gr uh, green light. So something looks green because it doesn't absorb green, and the green light wavelength come to you. Oh, you I tell you this? That's a funny idea. Okay? So I say, you know, a thing appears a certain color because it's, that's the color wavelength that it does not absorb. So plants look green because they don't absorb green light. That's why you have indoor plants, you don't give them green light. You give them blue light because that's what they prefer. You know what I'm talking about? If you go to a plant store, they under blue light. Yes? Indoor plants. Yeah? Because that's what they like. So they absorb blue and red preferably and they, they, they uh, don't absorb green. So that's, they reflect green. So we see them green. Yes? So a thing appears the color that it doesn't, it is not, right? So tell, tell people. So. Dark skinned people are really light. <laughs> light skinned people are really, light. you know, so it's because they look dumb because they don't have salt away. It's funny. Beauty skin deep, really it is. Yeah. All right. Anyways, that was the first. So, the color that they absorb, the wavelength that they absorb, the particular wavelength that they absorb is because that's the chlorophyll molecule. There are different types of chlorophyll molecules. They don't have to necessarily look green. Does that make sense? That's because of the wavelength that they absorb. But that's a very good question. All right, number two, mm, because of the pigment that they have. There are different pigments. Some of it is because of they have different chlorophyll wavelengths. Same thing. Some of it is they had to. No, you, you know why flowers look pretty? Why? They're fooling us. Really. Plants have pretty flowers to attract, you know, unsuspecting pollinators. It's an evolutionary advantage for them. That's, that's, that's their purpose. The purpose of the petals is to un, uh, attract unsuspecting pollinators. So that we go there, touch the pollen, and go to a different pollen and start pollinating stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's their purpose. They don't do photosynthesis. Flowers are not there to photosynthesis. Otherwise, there'll be flowers all over the plant. You have leaves to do that. So there are pigments to attract unsuspecting pollinators like you and me and bees and insects, right? Good questions. Next. That's very true. Very true. It's a good question. Another good question. They turn brown because 
all the all the important molecules that are in the leaves are being saved. It's packing. The tree's packing for winter. Do you understand? It's saving everything that it needs to come back in the spring. So it's breaking down and chopping down all those chlorophyll molecules, all that stuff, right? And it doesn't look green anymore because the molecules being broken down, the cells are being broken down, etc. That's why leaves shrivel. What's left over there? A ghost of cells. A leaf, a dry leaf, is a ghost of cells. It's mostly cell wall. That's kind of cool if you think about it. Yeah, but that's a good question. Multicellular heterotrophs. Animals do photosynthesis. Yes or no? Animals do photosynthesis. No, silly, they don't. All right. Nearly all are mobile. Nearly all of them are mobile at some stage, at least in their life. And they have organ systems like circulatory system, cardiovascular system. Don't forget the gastrointestinal system, very important. This is a luna moth. See, it looks very simple, but the antenna that the luna moth has right here, it's called a luna moth right here, are a part of their nervous system. Part of the nerve. They sense. It's a sense organ. They're detecting chemicals in the air. So even a tiny creatures like this, you'll see are actually very complex. Quite complex. Jalla, after a brief pause, we shall continue. Until next time, as-salatu wa-salamu 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 wa-salam